it you've given us a fantastic roadmap, whether we're a big company or a small business, on the things we can do to start incorporating diversity and inclusion into our organizations as well. So that answers that question for me is what's the advice? I I don't need to tell you though, there are some organizations that haven't quite embraced diversity and inclusion. Maybe they don't see a need for it. Maybe they have, you know, some other reasons, but what how what would you tell a company or how would you give advice of why why organizations, why leaders should be concerned and should embrace diversity and inclusion in their organizations? I mean, the number one is, you know, when you look at companies as a whole, right, it's about return on investment. We have to be real right at the end of the day. When you look at return on investment, there are so many studies and so much um, data out there to show that when you have a diverse population at every level in your business, not only from a return on investment standpoint, your bottom line is impacted in a positive when you have that, because again, DE and I as a whole is really about having a diverse population so that you can meet the needs of the business, right? So at the end of the day, when you look at two ways, you look at the company and you look at what does that organization look like from a diversity standpoint, and then you mirror it to our customer base, you want those to marry each other in some aspects, because then you know you're building products, right, that meet the community's needs, thinking what through a DE&I's lens at, at some point, um, as well as as a company to get those aspects and to learn those aspects and to know those needs, you have to have a diverse population. If not, you might miss the ball and create something that doesn't meet the needs of the community because your lens are um, sheltered to some degree. So to me, when I look at it as a group, it's not just about uh, the people, right? It's mirroring your customers. And then when you start mirroring those, you have to look at other aspects. Are your suppliers diverse that are providing you the products that you're going to integrate into your organization? And to do that, you have to be really mindful and take an effort to ensure that you're looking at those aspects and being mindful of those aspects. Because if return on investment is the priority, right, and you have to have a community and an internal organization, bridging that gap is really about mirroring each other so that you are providing services or products that meet the, the community's needs. And so going back into that data of showing that companies that are more diverse do bring in more revenue, you have happier employees, you're more productive, you're more efficient, you're more effective. To me, that's a sell in itself, right? But to get there, it takes a lot of strategy. How do you recruit? What are the organizations you're recruiting from? Um, do they span in all of those areas so that you can get a more diverse population that you are hiring. And that work is difficult in many cases, depending where you are in the world. You might not have um, schools that have that diversity in it to recruit from. So you have to look and you have to seek and search and, and um, really, again, get to the grassroots to know where, where are these people at? How do I get these people to come? And how does it look from the outside looking in? So one aspect I can share with that is because I manage our service organization, we did a, we focused a lot on trying to bring in more female technicians. And the first thing that we did was we went out and asked our female technicians that are already hired, what do they see? What do they feel they need? How did they, how did they bridge their career to come into this organization and what brought them here? And during that time um, that we asked those questions and just talking to, I think I need to probably meet with my female technicians again and ask the same question, but some of the stuff was basic, you know, how we market it, right? It, um, when you look at pictures of technicians and you're recruiting um, and you're using pictures, you know, do you show female technicians, you know, fixing slot machines? Because that's a positive. If people see it or a younger person's coming out of school or just getting into their career and they see that, oh, I can do this, then well, you can possibly bring in more females and be interested in applying. So we looked at, you know, again, same thing, very grassroots aspects. Um, as well as if you go into casinos now, you see slot machines have, you know, have historically, sometimes they'll start scaling down and being smaller sizes. But if you go into casinos today, they're huge. A lot of the slot machines are big. They weigh, you know, 400, 500, 800 pounds. And that's another aspect you have to think of. If you're a female and you see that, you may think right away, oh, I can't physically move that. Well, there's tools to help move that. And so looking at those aspects of, okay, if I am bringing in more females, 
and they are apprehensive to lift things that are, you know, three, 400 pounds. Do you have the resources and tools to help them? So from an equity standpoint that they are able to do the same thing as our, our men um, in the field are able to do. So to me, again, those are just mindfulness and being aware of it. And those are areas that we try to focus on all the time to make sure yeah, our employees are safe, but that they have the tools to be able to do their job, uh, male or female. So it sounds like if you like making money and you want to get new customers and keep customers coming back and you want to have happy employees who keep working for you, diversity and inclusion is something that's really important to keep in your long-term strategy. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. It should be part of everything you do. Everything, everything you do every single day, being mindful and keeping that on the side of you just to think, again, how does this impact everyone and how can I minimize issues but know that the more diversity I have, the more um, enriched discussions you have and it provides value in everything you do if you do it the right way.